So far, we've looked at who Christ is over us, over the workings of all creation, over the unfolding of world history, over the designs of global rulers, over the destiny of Earth's peoples, over the rebellion of evil powers. That seems like enough. But we want to look at one more, who Christ is over the building of his church. It says in Ephesians that now he is far above any ruler and authority and power or leader or anything else, not only for this world, but also the world to come. And God has put all things under the authority of Christ for the benefit of the church. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Then Paul goes on to say in chapter 4, we are growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Christ, being over all the other dimensions we just studied, is all ultimately for the sake of the church. Because his ultimate commitment is to be over the church and to build the church and make it everything God wants it to be. Right now, Christ is the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things in all ways. Right now, Christ is also the head of the church, from whom the whole body derives its life and growth. As our head, he defines us, he inspires us, he guides us, he sustains us, he coordinates us, he energizes us, he directs us, he defends us, he builds us. All of that is going on right now. The church shares in his cosmic reign. But we can never fully encompass the greatness of his kingdom. No, to say it another way, the church does not replace his kingdom. Rather, the church is created and sustained by his kingdom. Right now, Christ is building his church, and not even the gates of Hades can restrain or diminish its growth and its advances. Right now, the church provides the primary manifestation of the reign of Christ in this age by both our inward life and our outward mission. As we saw before, Christ expresses his continuing presence and activity among the nations most visibly and most tangibly through his people. As we saw before, right now, the church is his base of operations. It's his beachhead for kingdom advances in our communities as well as among the nations. Furthermore, Christ not only expresses the reign of his spiritual authority over the church at large, but also over every individual congregation. And he does so in equal measure for everyone. It is the fullness of the majesty of his ministry in terms of his presence and power and promises, his purposes, his productivity. Well, of course, this has tremendous implications for each one of us. What he is constructing with each one of our lives is directly related to how we are incorporated into his grand, eternal, cosmic, architectural plan for the church through Jesus. And primarily, he reigns over the building and the prospering of his church, of your church, by forever being over us who he is before us and within us and through us. And that's precisely where we're headed as our journey continues over the next four sessions as we continue to explore and experience what the spectacular supremacy of Christ is all about. The next time, session five, who Christ is as he goes before us. But how should we respond to all that we've learned in this session about who Christ is over us? You know, there was a time a few years ago, my family and my young children, we took a retreat in a cabin out in the woods that was offered to us by somebody else who um, hadn't been there for a few months and left us a note to let us know that some of the broken windows and other things were a result of someone who had actually broken into that cabin uh, a few weeks earlier. So here we were in a cabin way off in the mountains of North Carolina, separated, cut off from everybody else, in a cabin that had been broken into by a thief. And as the sun was setting that night, and we were all getting into bed, about two o'clock in the morning, I heard a noise that went something like this, bum, 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 bam. And I 
was wide awake. And so was Robin, because it sounded like somebody had just broken into the house. And you know how it is when you start listening in the middle of the night for sounds in the darkness? And there we were in the middle of the woods, and we could hear all kinds of noises outside, and it even sounded sometimes like someone was walking around out there. Well, the next morning we discovered that the source of that sound was that one of the shelves in the vibrating old refrigerator had somehow come loose and everything on the shelf had fallen to the bottom and it had gone ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum bam But out of that came a realization of something I've learned about how I respond to the truth of who Jesus is, and it's this. There is someone moving around out there, and he is over all that we have been studying in this session. And because of that, the next move is always his, and I should always be watching and waiting and listening for where he's headed. Or as Peter says in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. He doesn't say set yourself apart to Christ as Lord. He says, Set Christ apart in your heart. Give him his rightful place, or we might translate it, consecrate Christ as Lord. Give him his rightful place as the one anointed by God to be supreme over all. 